we've had uh, 16 great years here. Sally said yesterday, four presidential terms. So that's a long time. And uh, we have had a blast. When we came, we were asked to pull together a divided fan base uh, that's a difficult fan base at times, and we were able to do that. And I remember some experiences I was thinking about last night. Um, one, Coach Royal told us, I said, what do you have to do to be the head football coach at Texas? And he said, uh, there's such a diverse group that follows this football team that you got to pull them all together. And that's very difficult to do. He said, when you get them all together, um, it's wonderful, and it's a powerful place. But when not, it's very divided. And, and um, it's, it's a very difficult place to manage. So he said, it's like a box of BBs, and the BBs are dropped all over the room, and what you got to do is get the BBs back in the box. And we were able to do that. And we did it for a long time, till 2010. And then as of late, the BBs have gotten back out of the box. Uh, just a few experiences have been wonderful for us. Uh, meeting Coach Royal and uh, being around him and, and getting to know him on a pers personal basis like an older brother was unbelievable. Uh, I miss him today. Uh, the first day he walked out on the practice field, I was so proud to be the head coach at Texas and have him come out and stand there with his arm around you talking about his football team and see those white helmets with the Longhorn at the top. I remember the first game in the, the stadium with New Mexico State and being so proud to look out and I'm so proud now the stadium looks much different now than it did then. Uh, but that was a, a wonderful first experience. Things have changed since 9-11, but when we got here we uh, used to have the pilot fly by the tower uh, and show the team that they'd won the game from the away games and uh, go by and see the lit tower from the, the sky and all the kids would cheer. That was fun. Ricky's Heisman was a wonderful experience. The national championship and the BCS games were unbelievable and something that I will cherish. And we've also had our, our tough days too. The A&M bonfire uh, was uh, um, an experience that uh, I really hate today on, on Thanksgiving because the, the fact that those families lost their children. Um, the call that we got about Cole um, Pittman dying on his way back for spring practice is, is something that every coach fears, that when you get that call that you've lost a child and something that's so special to someone else. So uh, as the season ended with Steve Patterson coming in, uh, as I promised you, we uh, sat down on Friday afternoon and he and I and Bill Powers uh, had a great meeting. We had a good conversation. They expressed their support and they wanted me to stay. Um, I told them that I'd like to talk to Sally and sleep on it. And we went through the banquet and got up the next day and all of us met again and, and mutually decided that it was best uh, for us to move on. Uh, there was still a divided stand, fan base and that's not fair for Texas. That's not fair for our players. That's not fair for our coaches because they continued to be under undue pressure. So it was time for me to move on and let someone else come in and, and restart the program. Uh, this is a top five program annually. It may be the best job in the country. You should be in the mix every year. Um, and it's time for Texas to get back in the mix like we were from 04 to 09. And that was a wonderful run. It was a lot of fun. And, and uh, we haven't lived up to those expectations since 2010. There's great young players on this team and the future is very bright. Uh, we're leaving it better than we found it and it's been a fun, fun ride. Um, I want to thank all of our current players, our staff, and our coaches, because they've just, uh, they've done an amazing job this year of overcoming so much adversity, and it'll really help all of us in our lives to handle tough days and, and move forward, and I'm, I'm so proud of them. I also want to thank all the coaches and staff that we've had for the 16 years that we've been here, because we've had a lot of guys work really hard, uh, a lot of great players, and uh, it's been overwhelming since yesterday's announcement, the, the messages that Sally and I have gotten from friends and fans and uh, our ex-players, and, and I apologize to you. There's way too many to answer. So uh, we're going to have some more free time here pretty soon. So hang on. It'll take us a while. Uh, I do want to thank our fans. Our fans have been unbelievable. They have treated us with so much dignity and so much class, and, and not one time since I've been at Texas when we've been outside um, has anyone even insinuated anything rude to us. It's just been unbelievable, and, and I thank you flan, uh, fans. Uh, we're so blessed to have come to the state of Texas. Uh, we've got wonderful friendships here that we'll have for the rest of our lives. Um, Bill Duvall never missed a Thursday practice. He and Baker Gumry never missed a game. Um, Red McCones I talked to at least two times a week. 
uh, Joe Jamel. We don't have an agent, so Joe's been our lawyer, and I talked to Joe every night, talked to him right before I came over here, and somebody told me, you know, you ought to shut Joe up. He talks too much. I said, you know Joe. He's 88. He's going to say what he wants. I can't shut him up. So, uh, but Joe's been a great friend and uh, to us and the university, and he'll continue to be, and, and we love him and, and appreciate him very much. Um, I want to thank you guys that have been professional in the media. Some of you are good friends, and, and some of you have handled things with integrity and ethics uh, and class. And I appreciate that very much, because we're in a time where not everybody's doing that. And you all are in a very difficult profession, where you've got some that are taking shortcuts like they do in sports. And uh, I encourage you that are doing it right, even if you get behind sometimes, to continue to do it right, because we need the truth told in America. And we're not getting that all the time. We're, we're getting rumors that are un, un, uh, substantiated and uh, there's too many people that are trying to get ahead and they're using uh, false stories to get their name out there uh, so please uh, with you guys and ladies as much as I appreciate what you do and what you stand for you got to tell a story so we need you to tell the truth and I think that's very very important as we move forward um, in time I'll tell my story it's very interesting being the head football coach in a major program like Texas and uh, one of these days I'll get with one of you all that's been um, solid and has integrity and tell the story or I may even write a book because uh, being the head football coach at Texas is very interesting. Also I would like to thank uh, Don Evans, Tom Hicks, the Lost Dodge, Peter Flan and Bill Cunningham for bringing me here 16 years ago. Uh, we owe them a whole lot. The Lost is the best athletic director in the country. Uh, he and I have worked very closely together over the last 16 years and he's just unbelievable what he's done and been able to accomplish and and I look forward to spending some time with him in the future. I also appreciate Larry Faulkner and Bill Powers. Uh, they've, they've been great university presidents. Uh, they both care about students and kids and, and both care about uh, education and sports. Um, now after the Oregon game, uh, Sally and I will transition to the next phase of our lives. I've never done anything but coaching. So that's something that I'll have to look at. Uh, by contract, we will be working with uh, a special assistant to the president. And we'll also have some free time for opportunities outside the university. So it'll be fun to explore those things and, and see what's out there for us and, and uh, move forward. I did, uh, in talking to Mr. Jamel a few minutes ago, he said some people had called about coaching. And I said, bad timing. Uh, I need to back off for a day or two. Uh, yesterday was tough telling the staff and, and the recruits and um, uh, our players and, and their wives that we would no longer be here. Uh, that's a very difficult thing. and. Um, we actually went to the recruiting dinner last night to try to make sure that the recruits understand what was going on and that we uh, encourage them to come to Texas. And it was a wonderful place, and it's the best university in the country. And uh, we would want them to come here, and, and we would pull for them. And, and for them to hang in there, because Steve's going to hire a, a tremendous coach. Um, he'll have choices of the best coaches in the country. And that uh, uh, it's a fresh start, a new start for them. So the negativity that's been around the program will be cleared with the new guy, and, and that's great time for them. Uh, and then after that, this morning, the coaches continued to recruit. They'll be in the uh, building with me this afternoon, and we won't practice today, but we'll be working on our, our game plans for Oregon. Uh, I do promise the Texas fans and our, our football players that we'll do everything within our power uh, to make sure that, that we're prepared for Oregon, and, and that's very, very important for us. Any questions that I can answer for you? I'll, I'll answer a few, but I want to get to Steve and Bill soon. Coach, you've been a coach all your life. You've been here for 16 years. And thank you for some of us here. Thank you. Do you think it's out of your system coaching? But do you think your transition is going to be TV? What do you think next fall you'll be doing? All I know for sure right now, Ed, is I'm going to spend two weeks trying to beat Oregon, and I'm going to be working for President Powers. That, that's all I know. I, I hadn't, you know, this came up yesterday afternoon. Uh, we made the decision about 3 or 4 o'clock, walked out on the practice field, had an hour practice, and, and met the team and recruit. So it's been a little bit of a whirlwind here. Steve, Steve Patterson said probably shouldn't do it last night. Said you'll, you'll be too tired to get a good night's sleep. And that didn't help very much. You always said you wouldn't talk about your legacy and all that kind of stuff going forward. Now, is the weight of what you've been able to accomplish to all Americans, the graduation rate one of the highest in the school's history last year. Have you been able to think about some of those things? I really have, and I, I've been spending my time thinking about the players and, and um, the recruits, um, thinking about their futures and our coaches, uh, that their lives have changed drastically with their families uh, since uh, yesterday at, at 4 or 5 o'clock. 
Um, I, I figured I would be asked that today. I think if, if you ask me uh, what I wanted to be remembered for, it would be pretty simple. I would want to be remembered for uh, bringing some joy to Texas, getting us back on track. So the standard is set much higher now than it was when I was here, and, and that, that should help us uh, have to live up to that standard from now on. I would think the second thing is that I did it with integrity and, and class. And I think the third thing is that uh, the, the wonderful young people that have gone through this university uh, under our tutelage that uh, uh, have good lives and, and are, are better citizens for it. I, those are the three things that, that I would want to be remembered for, I think. How hard was it for you to come to this decision? Uh, oh, that's all I've ever done, so it's really hard. You know, Sally and I are, um, uh, we're going to work hard for two weeks, but then we're on uncharted territory, so we're, we're, we're newlyweds getting ready to be rookies at something. So that, that's where we're headed. How often, or how many times this week did you go back and forth in your own mind? Were you ever thinking that you did want to come back? Uh, I, I was really back and forth all week because I, um, I sincerely want what's best for the University of Texas. And uh, there are just too many distractions. There's too many negatives out there. And the, and the players and the assistant coaches shouldn't be having to deal with negatives about me. And, and, and our university, that's not healthy for our place. And this university is so much bigger than any person uh, that it is, it is definitely better in my mind that uh, um, Steve and Bill get them a new exciting coach. Everybody will be pumped. He's undefeated, I know already. Uh, he hadn't lost a game at Texas. Um, and I remember the most successful run I had was the time I took the job 16 years ago till the first game. And then after that it gets tougher because you have to coach. Yeah, the, the question is, what role will we have? We will do anything that, that uh, Bill and, and Steve ask us to do. I have uh, no interest in, in being involved in the coaching search because that's their, their choice. Uh, so what we'll do is what we've always done. We'll do what we're told. And if, if there's something we can do to help, then we want to help. We don't want to sit here and do nothing. And, and I'm sure that will take a, a little while for everybody to get on the same page. And uh, hiring the new coach is a lot more important than what happens to us. So. Uh, I'm sure that'll be the focus, and, and they get the new coach in here and get him going. And obviously, if he wants to ask me questions, I'll, I'll try to help him in any way I can as well. But I, I will not be involved in that search. Like after the week of rumors and everything that's happened, how did the players react yesterday when you told them? Uh, the players are um, great kids, and, and um, uh, yeah, they, were, they were wonderful. I mean, I, I, haven't, I didn't get to see them much. It kind of stunned them, and they all came up, hugged my neck, <laughs> wanted me to break them down, which I don't usually do. Uh, and, and then uh, they went on their own. A lot of them came and recruited. So I think I'll have a, a much better sense at, at a team meeting tomorrow where I'll have a chance and sit down and tell them because uh, they need to know that, that um, uh, we'll still be here for them. We won't interfere with the new coach, but if there's some, some relationship we've had with them and they need advice on certain things outside of football, that Sally and I'll be here for that. Um, I, I've got to thank all the high school coaches in the state. They've been unbelievable. I've got to thank all these parents because they, they've put up with rumors uh, about me being fired every week for about two years, maybe three. I think I quit two years ago in a, in a uh, uh, basement in Topeka, Kansas. So, uh, I mean, I've been out of here so many times. It's, it's, it was a shock when I finally did it, and somebody said, ah, I think he's kidding. Uh, so uh, they've put up with a lot, and the players have been loyal. The parents have been loyal. The, the coaches had so many opportunities to leave last year. None of them left. They've been great. Uh, so I need to sit down with the players tomorrow, and if they're still looking at the NFL, we got Arthur Johnson and the staff will still be working with them daily. Uh, but I'm going to work with them through Oregon, and, and then I'll be in town, so I'll, I'll help them any way I can. But if some want to transfer, we need to talk to them about that. I would encourage them to wait and see who the new coach is and go through spring practice. And um, I told them yesterday that they should not be mad at this university. They chose it. They came. It's a, it's a wonderful place. Um, and, and I made the choice, so let's, let's move forward. And it's important to beat Oregon and, and uh, move on from there. Not at all. Uh, the, the, the reason that's out there is we used to win 12 and 13, and we won eight. It's, it's not about integrity, it's not about class, it's not about grades, it's not about any of that stuff. You've got to win. And, and we set a standard at this place, you better win all of them. 
and that's the expectation. And and I understand that. I'm I'm a big boy. I, I understand if you don't win all the games here, it's people are unhappy. So um, other people love eight wins. This place in that way, and I agree with them. I, I do not think that we live up to the standards that we had set since 2010. And and I thought we were going to this year. I really thought we had a chance to make a run, uh, and it didn't happen. And, and bless their hearts, the, the coaches and players did everything they could against the perfect storm of everything bad that could happen, and they still fought through it. So I'm, I'm proud of them, but uh, I, I love the University of Texas, and I want only best for it. And, and it's an unbelievable experience uh, that, that we got an opportunity to coach here, and, uh, and it's changed our lives. Yes, I want to make sure that everybody knows that I've been treated fairly and it's a wonderful run here and that I love the University of Texas. I have no regrets at all. Um, and probably stepping away will add 10 years to my life. Maybe, maybe 20. I'm really 42. It just looks like I'm a little older now. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to get into all that because you all have already got opinions and, and, and I don't want to go, I just don't want to go there. But uh, I was told I could stay. I felt like I could stay. Uh, I really didn't feel like it was best for the university to stay. I, I, thought, I thought they needed change. What advice would you have for your um, uh, Whoever takes this job is going to have a wonderful experience. Um, and like Coach Royal told me, I said, Coach, what do you have to do to win at Texas as a head football coach? He said, well, uh, you need to get all the BBs in the box. Uh, you need to reach out to your lettermen because they're very, very important here, and they are, and I need to thank them. They, our lettermen have been unbelievable. He said you need to reach out to the faculty. He said you got to handle the wonderful media that surrounds you at the University of Texas. And then he said, uh, uh, oh, yeah, and you need to win all the games. You mentioned how important it was for you to come in and try and put the BBs back in the box for you and the fan base. Does it hurt knowing that the fan base is kind of not at all. I have, I have absolutely no anger, uh, no regrets for anything that's happened. I'm angry with us too. I told the staff and the coaches, you know, you got to win more than eight games at Texas. And that's not fair. And we're the ones that screwed it up. Lord, we won nine the first year and got a parade. So that, that's what's changed over 16 years. And that's okay. The standard is set really high here. And I'm darn proud we were part of that standard. Am I supposed to be speaking into this? <laughs> okay, 16 years ago. <laughs> yeah, uh, about December, right after the A&M game in 010. And it's been a fight since then. You know, when you, when you, you play for a national championship and lose, that's not good. You need to win. And it's a real negative thing when you do that. Uh, you, didn't, you didn't win 12, you lost one. And that one cost everybody a national championship. We ain't got a bunch of those around here. So uh, that was a difficult time. But since then, it's been an absolute fight. And we've got it back now where we've got depth, we've got speed, we've got good players. Uh, and, I, and that was part of the decision, too. Could we win next year? And I thought we could. I thought we could have won this year. And you got a lot of things coming back. So I really thought, you know what? All I wanted to do was get it back for the next guy. Uh, but I think it's better now. He'll have a chance to come in here and get it back, and, and, and that's fun for him and fun for these kids, and, and they just need new energy. A lot of negative energy around, and you know what? Life's too short. We don't need negative energy, and especially around kids. I was sitting there uh, Friday night at the banquet, and then I met with families on, on Saturday morning, and sitting there talking to families about coaching their children, their students, for the next four years, and not being able to, in my mind, honestly tell them I would be able to do that for the next four years really threw me because I felt like, you know what? These people need a commitment for four years. I can't give them that. I, I just can't do that. I, I mean, so uh, that bothered me. And I told them that last night. I said uh, a big part of my part of this decision was that uh, I can't promise you four years. I just can't. I, you know, everybody says, well, if you want them all next year, if you win, win 12, it's 10, win 10, it's fine. And I can't promise that. I, I mean, I, I, ball bounce is funny. But time for two last questions. Back, you, you, know, you, you kept going back to this year would be the year you thought you could take that, that really big step. Why do you think that didn't happen this year? Uh, injuries. 
lose quarterback. I think we lost eight of our top ten players, and nobody wants to hear it, but it's it's fact. So, um, but how do we know it's not going to happen next year? We've had really bad injuries for the last three years. So, I think that's something the new coach has to look at. Why have there been so many injuries for the next three year, last three years? And and I can't answer that. God, I've tried, and I I can't. I told them not to get hurt. Well, you got to win, and and if if we didn't win next year, then we weren't going to keep coaching, because we we had subpar seasons as such for Texas, uh, with eight wins and nine wins, and then this year hopefully nine. But Oregon's real good. I've watched them, and they're they're a BCS team headed to the Alamo Bowl. Uh, so um, again, we we got to get it back to uh, top five in the country, and and we weren't doing that. And and to me, that's what really bothered me. Anything else? In closing. Uh, there'd be two things. I would want Cole Pittman back, and I would want the bonfire not to have happened at A&M. Those are two horrible things in my life that I'll never forget. And like I said, playing A&M on Thanksgiving, I thought about the families, because I want to keep my children. And when you lose your children, there is nothing worth that in the world. And I, I, I think about that every Thanksgiving, because there are 12 families that don't have a good Thanksgiving. And, and that'll, that'll never go away. Cole Pittman. Um, I'm responsible for the precious things that those parents send you. They're the most precious thing in their lives, their children, and we lost one. And, and I talked to, to Mark and Judy Pittman today, and, and I, I have the, the little program from the funeral in my office that I look at very often. Uh, and it, it's just a memory to me to make sure that when we're responsible for 125 kids, we got to make sure they tell us when they're going home, make sure they text us when they get home, make sure they text us before they leave home, make sure they text us when they get back, because we cannot afford to, to uh, lose someone's child. And that's very, very important to us. And, and in, in closing, uh, Bill and uh, Steve are coming up, and uh, I think Steve's wonderful. I, I think we are so lucky to have him. I got to spend quite a bit of time with him, a little bit at New York and some Friday, and, and a lot yesterday and today, kind of cleaning up things and, and getting ready to move forward. Uh, and as, uh, as great as the loss was, um, and he had a great run, he was ready to step out. As good as our run's been, uh, Steve is a, a breath of fresh air. He's going to move forward. He was very honest and direct with me through this whole process. Uh, one of the things I'm going to miss is not working with him. So uh, I think he's a star. And, and Bill and his committee did a great job of, of hiring him. And, and Bill and Steve will get us a great new football coach, and, and we'll move forward. So I'm going to get out of the way because you all are more excited about the one coming than you are the one leaving. I've been doing this a long time. Uh, and I'm going to let them talk to you about the process and, and where they're headed uh, with the new coach. Thank you, coach. Thank you all very much. i just say on my behalf, I really appreciated the opportunity to work with Mac the past uh, couple of weeks, my first couple of weeks here, and uh, really enjoyed our conversation. And as an alum, the guy really did a great job building this program for the last 16 years. So I don't know if you want to say anything. We'll, well let me just say, you heard uh, one of the most eloquent and, and uh, discussions of a transition uh, that Mac Brown is making. Uh, it's just an unbelievably classy, successful uh, human being. And we are blessed that Mac Brown uh, was a coach here at the University of Texas for 16 years. I'll just leave it at that. Bill, could you just talk about, as you both of you also to address the Friday meeting, how that went, and whether you know, the, Mac, the door was open for Mac to come back to support the team? Well, let me just say there were discussions over a period of time. Uh, I think uh, Mac described this as a difficult choice for him, it's back and forth. Uh, that's the way decisions are made, and on Sunday he decided this was the best for him and the family and the university, and it was his decision, and so I'll just leave it Dr. at Howard, that. Was this region-driven at all? No. I, I did not hear from any regions on this, have not over the last period of time. I have kept uh, our liaisons informed as to where we are. The, uh, I read in the papers and on the blogs that this was region driven. I was not given any direction uh, 
at all from uh, from any region uh, on on this on this issue. I, in in fact, I was told uh, by some by regents we don't hire the coaches. You know, we've really been focused on just getting through the last uh, 24, 48 hours uh, with Mac and Sally and, and the rest of us. Bill and I will sit down after this and, and uh, get our plans together. But, you know, we're going to go out there and find the best football coach we can for the University of Texas. I think the key is setting the criteria, uh, getting some clarity around that, and then moving as expeditiously as we can to, to hire the best football coach we can as quickly as we can. What is uh, Matt's role? He kind of alluded to it that he was still going to maybe be here. Is that through 2020, or is there anything to say Well, as I think you know in his contract, uh, which was uh, a provision that was put in a few years ago, um, I think we've always known Mac won't coach all of his life, and when he didn't, we want him to be a Longhorn, and uh, he can represent the university in uh, a whole variety of ways. He will, uh, that, that is uh, uh, the role he'll play. Uh, it's a special assistant to the president. We'll, we'll sit down and work that out. It will give uh, time to do commentary or consulting or what he wants to do, that's part of the contract, but he will uh, uh, have some role in representing the university uh, uh, and, and it's, it's not precisely defined and we'll sit down and uh, work, work that out. Bill, Bill, is there a strong likelihood that just the two of you will decide the, the next coach rather than a collection committee? Well, let me say the, uh, Steve will, will hire the next coach. The next coach will hire him. I don't, uh, Athletics is not my field, it is Steve's field. We will talk together and consult and uh, we'll sit down uh, and, and go through a process. I'm sure that, that we'll get input from uh, a variety of sources, but Steve, you might want to, Steve Patterson will hire the next football coach. Steve, that's what you did right? Yeah, we did. I mean, certainly you have constituents that you're gonna wanna consult, make sure they're informed and have their input from the standpoint of setting criteria and, and strategic direction. But yeah, when it got right down to it, I hired Ty. Steve, along those lines, though, this is a place where a lot of people want to give input to the person making the call. Thank God they're called fans, and we want, them, we want people to be passionate about football. And, uh, you know, I think it was Daryl Royal long ago that said the great thing about UT is people have passion for football, and the tough thing about UT is sometimes they get passion for football. I think that's the only successful way to have a, have a, uh, a search process. You know, I'm, I'm not going to be sitting in front of you guys every day talking about who I had a phone call with. You know, at the end of the day, uh, there's been a lot of malarkey in the in the press over the last couple of weeks. You know, I mean, I think Bill and I have had lunch with about a dozen coaches or something that's been reported one time or another. Yeah. We haven't talked to anybody, haven't had anything go go on. I think you have to have uh, the ability to have a private conversation and and come out of it with the best coach you can get. That's the only way you're going to get there. Well, I, I don't think that uh, I've been an alum for whatever 30 some years and followed the school for a long time. Went to school here was on the was on the nine year plan. So, you know, know a lot of the, know a lot of the people involved here. So. Uh, Iron coaches and, and uh, running an athletic uh, enterprise is not foreign to me. You both kind of touched on it a little bit, but what is Texas losing in the background to long time? Yeah, obviously a great classy operator, won a heck of a lot of ball games. Uh, you know, today's performance was a tour de force. It's it, this was Mac Brown, and uh, you know when you sit with a man like we did for last week and. Uh, 
you know, when you watch him perform like this, when you watch him with the recruits last night, when you watch him pray with his kids after a game, you see what a classy guy he is. Let me, if I could, if that was to, to both of us, I think uh, this is a moment to reflect uh, on that. Uh, Mac would always uh, shun talking about the legacy. It is an unbelievable legacy. Uh, this is a transition of one of the great football coaches in America of all time, certainly on the field, national championship, but a four-year run for almost unsurpassed. Uh, uh, tremendous 16-year career with wins. Uh, even more than that, we, we've talked about graduation rates and the family atmosphere, uh, the way he represents uh, the university. And to see him, uh, and Steve mentioned this, uh, talk to the players after a game, after a victory, after a loss, uh, to see him work with these young people. Uh, as I said, we've, we're, we're transitioning uh, with, one of the, with one of the all-time great human beings and football coaches. Steve, with the, with the the NFL? Um, my pref I think in college football, uh, college football is a different enterprise than, than the NFL. Um, there are far different uh, uh, requirements of a college coach. Uh, certainly, you, you don't have the same sort of interaction with high school coaches and and students and academics and mentoring and and donor relations and uh, all those kind of uh, uh, demands uh, that go into college coaching uh, that you have at, at the pro level. So, uh, I think whoever's going to coach here has got to have. Some extensive experience in, in the college game. He didn't tell me anything different than what he just told you guys for the last 20 minutes. Uh, and you know, I think it was a, a tough decision for him, and and one that it uh, he went back and forth on. And uh, the one thing he was consistent about, he said, you know, I want what's best for the University of Texas. Well, I haven't. You've read in the newspapers uh, that several months ago there was some contact with his agent. I think that's behind us. I think a lot has been made about that. Uh, casual contact of that sort, you know, why not talk to them? that? That happens, I think, that's all behind us. Other than that, I have had no contact with Nick Saban or his agent or any intermediaries. I don't know Nick Saban. Uh, so all of those rumors, the lunches, the meetings, they are simply uh, groundless. People always talk about the special skill set you need to be an head coach here at UT. Can you guys talk about how, how I guess, the special challenge of being a head coach here, the skill set that you have to have? Well, I think you got to be good with the press. you got to be able to recruit. You got to understand what a big-time college football program is about. Uh, you're going to be under a lot of scrutiny. Uh, you got to win. You got to win big, and you got to graduate your, your student athletes. Uh, you got to take real classes. Uh, you got to mentor them. You got to recruit the right kind of folks. You know, you're not going to necessarily have all those requirements at at some other schools out there. Well, I think any executive, um, you have a list of criteria for what they have to meet, and if they don't necessarily have all those skills themselves, they got to figure out a way to get people around them that'll that'll do that. So, uh, Max, a tough, tough act to follow. I think one of the the eloquence and what you saw today, yes, dealing with the press, dealing, you know, we're we're in a fishbowl here. It's just a a, a very visible uh, institution. But you see that when he's talking with the families or, or the players, honesty and what he says you can take to the bank, those, I think that is a, a skill that uh, any college coach is, is going to have, not just for the external world, but within the community and with the players and with the coaches. And uh, so I, I think that will be 
important. Steve, you've heard a lot of great basketball coaches. Is there a difference between hiring a professional basketball coach and a college football coach? Well, I think it's a matter of evaluating what the skill set is and the criteria. You know, for any coach, any executive, um, and the criteria are different at different spots. And, you know, we've been talking for the last couple of minutes about what you're going to need to have at UT, and that's the kind of coach we're going to have to go find. Steve Max, I want to be discussing the way a divided fan base. How much pressure do you feel to make the right hire to get these fans back to the I don't worry about pressure. You know, I. I've been operating in this universe for all of my adult life. Steve, would you like to have a coach by Christmas or Easter? I'd like to have a coach by uh, Tuesday at noon if we could. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> you already have names in your head right now, short list. No, I think that, that we need to sit down and get clear about what the criteria are, and, and then you sit down and start talking to people. Matt toes up. Yeah, I think at the appropriate time. You know, I mean, we've really been focused through, you know, today on, on figuring out where we are with Mac. Uh, I think once you once you hire a head coach, then we'll figure out, you know, who on the staff might stay. I don't know. Bill and I haven't had a chance to sit down and talk about that. You know, I, I genuinely was looking forward to working with Mac. I, I think it was a decision that weighed heavy on him. Uh, I thought what was uh, best about it was how classy he was about genuinely wanting to do what was best for the school and the student athletes, and uh, uh, and he and Sally had to figure that out. You know. Well, my. Uh First reaction was, uh, I know Mac has been weighing this uh, for some time, uh, and he's a good friend. He's uh, done so much for our university, and, and my first uh, thought was about Mac. Well, we we haven't we, we've had some. Dis I mean, there are things in his contract, uh, including his role at the university. Should he want to transition into that, we have had some discussions uh, of those. Uh, they are in his contract. We we, we clarified uh, some of those. Uh, we haven't had any discussions. Uh, since he's actually decided to uh, step down and go into that role, uh, other than the discussions you had with him about uh, what his role would be. And uh, it's, it's amorphous, but it'll be to benefit the university. Uh, and Mac and I will work that out. He'll, he'll be a tremendous asset for the university, but it will be consistent with him doing other things uh, in his career. continue that role as advisor to you if you say you took a television job? Yes. Absolutely. That, that's the, the idea is that it would give him a chance to do some consulting or whatever he wants to do, uh, uh, but also do a uh, number of things uh, to advance the interests of the university. I'd like two more questions. Bill, are you disappointed by how this lawsuit has played the pressure that's been finally Well, I'm, you know, as, as Mac has said, I think as Steve has said, you know, there's there's good news and bad news about that. I'm, I'm, we're blessed that people are interested in us, and and uh, there's been a lot of interest in this. I think a lot of it is Texas. A lot of it is Mac Brown. He's what his legacy is. Uh, he's he's a stand-up guy. He's very charismatic, <clears throat> but there has been a lot of interest. It is difficult. Uh, I'll, I will say to conduct business when you find out you're having lunch with so and so at such and such when you know you're not in that town and it affects the players and it affects the coaches and uh, so there, w there was a lot of 
pressure. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's uh, kind of life in uh, major public universities, and you get used to it. Um, you know, I've been hiring coaches for, I don't know, 20 plus years. I, I, I think the, the appreciation that you have uh, is one of uh, how different the college coaching game and responsibilities are than the professional. I've not had any conversations with anybody. <laughs>